Hola, como esta? Muy bien, gracias. All right, we just got in our new performance shipment straight out of Sweden. These guys manufacture all their own parts. They started in 2004 by a bunch of enthusiasts that loved BMW. They're actually pretty famous for their fuel rails for the M20 BMW motor. So we got all of our fuel management system stuff from them. We're gonna start doing this and all the plumbing for the brakes, fuel lines, all that stuff with Chris. We got the PTFE hoses for this. And what that does is it allows a lot more pressure. You can actually use PTFE lines for power steering the high pressure side because they can't handle up to 1500 psi so they're really great for fuel systems they handle the e85 they're ready for it and it also comes with a teflon coating on the inside so it allows for a bigger burst so you can handle all of the psi for them so we have a couple different things like we have two different catch cans we weren't sure which one we wanted to use one just a little smaller than the other but they also come integrated with these sweet mounting brackets you gotta love that and it's a dipstick. Easy to set. yeah and a dipstick we got our fuel filter we got this sweet full flow ethanol content sensor so it actually has a bypass instead of trying to squeeze all of your return line through this tiny little smaller than 5 16 inlet so that's cool come with the fuel pressure regulator they got their gauges and like he said that we have all the ptfe hose in here too which does take a little bit more work to assemble but in the long term of things you got to do it again later yeah. on they even come with little tie downs for it Line and clamps and the separators. Yeah. You know, they really think of everything. Shout you know, out we're to gonna sauce this thing up with all these fat Johnnies. Look at all that. They even threw in a wrench for us, you know? These yeah. people keep stealing ours, so we're really happy we got another A and wrench. Thanks, new performance. Yeah. So now we're gonna get cracking on some fuel system stuff. Now, since I have the gas tank out of the car and it's cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and do our whole internal fuel surge tank setup outside of the car before I install it because I'm a tall guy and squeezing in there and getting between roll cage bars and stuff to get in there, it's not always a good time. I can put that on the table and get her done. Fred, what are you doing? Put a shirt on. All right. For our in-tank fueling system, Radium actually makes this really sweet internal fuel surge tank. It comes with all of your free outs, wires, adapter harnesses if you were, say, running it in a stock chassis. This lid drops in just like the stock one does. Now because on this car we are going to be running a return type fuel system, they actually give us a bypass to take this adjustable pressure regulator out to let us run our return over. We're actually going to run our return over to the passenger side because we're going to be running a separate pump over there to feed our surge tank as well. That thing is sweet. I mean, got like a banjo thing going too, huh? Yeah, that's going to keep us, hopefully, without having to cut into the lid so all of our fuel stuff will stay separated. So the conventional way that this is supposed to be ran is a lot different than what we're doing. We're not going to be using siphon tubes and I'm actually going to mount this on the driver's side of the car because on the driver's side is where my main fuel lines are supposed to run. And I'm also not going to be using the siphon tubes to pull fuel from one side of the tank to the other. I am going to be using another fuel pump to my return side. My return line will feed into that side and there'll be a lower powered fuel pump that's feeding fuel from this side to that side. So three pumps. Two in this, and then one in the other side yeah. for the feeder pump. Yeah, it'll work just like your internal surge tanks do on fuel cells and things like that. So right now we're just removing that stock fuel pressure regulator because this is for a pressurized feed. And pressurized feeds work good for what a 335 is originally because they come direct injected. But with this, because we're running it as our primary fuel source, and we're going to be running low pressure fuel system, we have to worry about our fuel system vapor locking which is basically when the engine gets so hot after you shut it off or it's been running for a while that the fuel inside there will actually start to vaporize. Then we try to start the car, it won't start because you're just getting fuel vapor instead of actual fuel. Vapor locks are real thick, not great. All right, so as with most of our builds, we use our DW pumps. Boys always come through for us. Kits come with all the stuff we need for install, the hose clamps, E85 resistant fuel hose, and our connectors. So we're gonna get to wiring all of this in. I'm going to be doing this one a little bit different than how they are from the factory. Basically, we ripped everything out of the stock tank because there's so much crossover, jet pumps, weird stuff that's in there that's just going to take way too much development. Plus, there was a bunch of sand in this tank when we first got it. Clean the hell out of it and really don't want to put all those sandy components back in there. So this comes wired for two fuel pumps and a level sensor. We're going to be running three fuel pumps because our third pump's going to be over here lifting fuel from the driver's side of the car over to the passenger side of the car. 
The one that's actually labeled for level, I'm gonna be using for a third fuel pump. Might not be the best way to do it, but best it's already way there. I do it. And I don't really feel like drilling holes in the other fuel assembly, which can create all kinds of problems for us as well. So our return line's gonna be feeding that side, so that way that side never runs dry and the pump doesn't run hot. We're gonna get our pump assemblies all installed into this cradle and then run our wires and leads to that side and then figure out how we can integrate our other pump into that stock assembly and still have a return line feeding into that side. Got our two pumps installed inside of our hanger here. Now, there is a bit that goes on the front here. There, this guy. Goes in here, which will then feed fuel from the opposite side of the tank. But we noticed that the inside of this guy, it's a tiny little hole. So we're gonna drill that out so there's not a bunch of flow restriction on that pump, so that way that pump's gonna pull way less amperage than our other two pumps, just less electrical load, less problems. What do you think, quarter incher? Quarter incher. Three eighter, we open it up. All right, so while he was putting on those little sock fittings, I got this bad boy drilled out, just big enough, doesn't interrupt the threads. And put that back in, and then put that bad boy in there. So, now what we're gonna do is hook up our wires, now that we know that this fits inside there, which was part of my concern. Big pumps. It's tight. So, the way that we have it laid out now, this is our crossover tube that's gonna feed the fuel from this side over to this side, as well as our fuel return line we're gonna be gonna go right in there. So this now will get connected to the base of this, which we drilled out. So now it's gonna feed our two pumps in there. Well, I was originally gonna run the power off of here, but this actually has a pretty nice connector that also runs a nice large gauge power wire, which matches the same gauge power wire that's originally on the fuel pumps. So we're just gonna use that. That way I don't have to run wiring throughout the inside of the fuel, so, or fuel tank, which I don't really like to. where the original routing was so assuming that BMW kind of knew what they were doing from the factory when they made these we're gonna run along that same route we'll cut all our lines to length and get all that sorted out all right so for our lines we are using these line spacers as underbody mounts because we can use an M5 nut cert and just pass the bolt through and it keeps them nice and tight keeps good tension on them only thing is Craig it has to drill tiny little holes drill some holes so the harbor that they give you with this actually only will hold the lines together. It won't give you any mounting points to do anything with. It comes with a little M4 threaded hole. Just drilling them both out and then we nut started, just like Chris said, and just tie it up into the chassis itself. So it'll pinch it and then pull it up into the chassis. Where these are just hold it together if you're gonna run it somewhere, then you have to have a different way to hold them down. Chris came up with a cool little idea. We're just gonna drill some holes in them. Drill some holes. All right, so since we got our flex fuel sensor thing mounted, now um, we made our lines. Now we're mounting our fuel filter once our bracket gets in. So these lines got a little bit of slack here. What we're gonna do is, because we have some looped over the top of the gas tank, what we can do is once we have our fuel filter mounted, we'll just work our clamp from here and get all the slack towards the back and then we just pull it up on top of the gas tank. That way nothing's gonna droop down and worry about anything getting hit. That being said, also this being kind of a low point of the car and also a typical spot that you will bottom out pulling on trailers and stuff, Greg, it's gonna make like a little steel bracket that's going to cover these lines just up until it gets to pretty much where the frame rail is going to protect it. Just so we don't rip out fuel lines doing dumb stuff that's not even drifting. Or if we dirt drop or something like that, you know, you never know what's going to happen. The last thing you want your car to be leaking is fuel. Well now that we got our fuel lines and stuff relatively situated, everything from there forward we can build on some motors in the car. Obviously we got to figure out where we're going to mount our fuel pressure regulator and all that. So we are going to start plumbing the other thing that we need to run to the rear of the car which is going to be the brake lines. Some for our hydro and then some for the foot brake. So what we did is we put these two 3AN bulkheads in here. So we're gonna run all hard lines. We had some issues with the steel braided lines on the Jay-Z's on the hot side, where eventually the Teflon inside the lining gets soft and we don't need those problems. So we're gonna run a brake hard line back here through the engine bay as nice and tidy as we can. Run it through there. We have a small hole here where I'm gonna put another bulkhead like this so that our line can come out there and split for our front brakes. And then for the rear brakes, we got to put a bracket over here somehow for a proportioning valve. So we're going to figure that out here in a second. Figure out the best place to mount it and how we're going to route it. So Chris decided to take it upon himself to teach us how to hydro dip. So you're going to get to see it here first. You say teach like I know what I'm doing. I have never attempted this before. You read the instructions. I read the instructions, which is rare for me. So we got a bucket of water, which is warmer than room temperature. 
Supposed to be between 80 and 90 degrees. So we just got our bacon out in the sun over here. And this is Florida. It's supposed to sit for like a minute and then you spray that on and then you wait 10, 15 seconds and then you dip your pieces. So we're gonna try this on our timing covers over here, which we painted with a gray base coat. So wherever it's transparent here, should show through some gray. Set Trying to hydro dip something. I've never done it before. Watch. Yeah, try. Set seat is back. Set seat. I mean, set seat never left. Somehow it seems like it's not supposed to do. How do you do. choose the pattern? I don't know. Science. I have a feeling like this isn't going to go very well. Science, bitch. <laughs> it's not going to go very well the way it's looking right now. Dude, it's great. Just stick to stick to your side. This side looks a little thinned out. This side right here. Get in there, dude. Just dive in. You have no idea. Should That's a yaw. You degree angle. You ain't got too much water, bud. I think your ratio's off. What? Whoa! <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. Don't ever question me. Hey, Marco, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and shut up. Okay. Yeah. That looks yeah. really good. You know? Yeah. That's not bad. That's sick. Should have picked a better design. <laughs> <laughs> What's your head? Round two. motor mounts. So we did the original development. We have one version which has a baffled pan and the engine's a little bit further forward which allows you to use the N54 transmission. Then we have another one that is this one which allows you to retain all the stock oil pan components and everything like that. So that's the one we're using on this one because we're going to be doing custom drive shaft and all that stuff anyway. The other options are more so to make it easier for street cars to be able to swap in. This one you can kind of just do whatever you want, especially with the DCT because we're not so worried about shifter position. You can see how perfectly it fits. Nice dead center. If you follow the coil pack line down the middle, I mean, it goes right to the hole that's in the middle of the engine bay. Right yeah. now, we obviously... The hole that was, yeah, we patched it. We obviously right now have a piece of 2x4 supporting the front because there's no transmission in place right now, but engine position is just great. I mean, clearance for intake manifold, turbo, downpipe, everything is right where we want it, which is just a beautiful thing. Available at Drift HQ. Yeah. Buy one. Do this to your car. You could be Make cool your too. car cooler. You could be cool, too. Get rid of that BMW motor. Does that look good? We could end the day with this, and I, I'm spent. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna put the other fire on. So we came back to a bunch of sweet parts that came from both SLG and HTG transmissions. We have our module that came back from SLG. They did all of our wiring modifications, sent us this sweet adapter harness that will go to our GCU, which is from HTG tuning, so that you control all the stuff you want to, shift points, how strong or hard your shifts are. SLG also came out with this sweet billet pan here, which increases the capacity and also helps with the cooling. Oil cooler adapter for the transmission, drive shaft adapter, cables, all the hardware you need to put the stuff together. So we're gonna start assembling the transmission now and see if we can figure this out. We've never done DCT stuff before. And also, we got this beautiful DCT shifter unit that we're gonna have to wire into our module and it comes with this base plate which is designed for an S chassis. HPR sent us this base plate and it is flat which also our trans tunnel is flat so we might be able to use this mount four points and then this bolts up on top of it so be a nice cleaner finish instead of us just bolting it through our trans tunnel. Yeah shout out to HPR tuning and seems legit garage for hooking and us HTG. up and HTG look at these stickers too these are cool it's pretty sick 
these wires that we had snipped earlier are all marked with one dash, two dash, and three dashes. So these are likely gonna get soldered back into our module that we got there. So SLG has a video that shows you exactly how to do this, so I'm not gonna walk through the step by step. I'm gonna watch a video and figure out how to put it back together myself. And then we'll link it right there if you wanna watch it. Right now we currently have the perfect storm. We have like no cars in the shop, minus the orange one, which is way over here. It's raining, so it's cooler outside, so we can leave the door open, which allows us to paint. And we removed all of our fuel lines and everything. That way, Great we can... lines gonna get painted because I don't yeah, really care about, about that. that. Yeah, yeah. Let me so hard lines gonna blend right in. Gonna throw a little feeling. So we just did something that was not fun, two of us. Yeah, you know, we went at a tall trans jack so we could work on cars full height on the lift. It's all fun and games so you gotta lift a DCT that weighs like at least 250 pounds. I yeah. swear to God. It took everything we had to get it up there, the two of us. I don't know what the actual weight is. I'm sure somebody's gonna correct me, but this shit is heavy. It's over 200 pounds. It's an awkward it lift. It took a lot. It was an awkward lift, but it is still heavy. So we don't have any of our um, adapter stuff in there aside from the plate. What we're doing now is just checking our clearance to the bell housing because there's one corner over here that I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to hammer out on our trans tunnel. And if you can't hear it, the, the rain is freaking pouring down. I had a huge puddle here, I had a rain river, so we got a little bit of, it's no good. So you know the process of building race cars? It basically involves putting the motor in and taking it out like 17 times. Right now we only put it in one time, so you know, that means we got a lot more to look forward to. <laughs> this girl is gonna make her way back out so we can do some find adjusting with a hammer on the firewall because this little guy right here. And Chris won't let me hit that little guy with the hammer, so we gotta hit the car with the hammer instead. So we've made an executive decision that it's gonna look like dog shit if we try and hammer this thing and make clearance. So instead, Cricket is going to cut it out and we're gonna weld a plate in just to make that section flat. That's gonna give us more clearance and also it'll give us a lot more space than what we need. So while he's banging away at that, I am going to probably put our adapter pieces on here. So with the DCT adapter from PMC, you have obviously your adapter plate. Now they do give you two options, a rotating mass that is behind here. So they have a smaller one and a larger one. We are gonna be using the larger one. Larger one keeps more inertia spinning in the motor. It does make your shifts and stuff slightly slower, but it helps to maintain power through the shift so you keep the tires flash if you're shifting mid-drift. It doesn't bog the engine down because there's less rotating mass, similar to using like a lightweight flywheel. And since this is a six cylinder application, not a V8, we are gonna use the slightly heavier one just to keep his power levels up while he's drifting. Since we're kind of experimenting with all the DCT stuff ourselves, we feel like this is gonna be our better bet. Road race stuff, they do have a smaller hub that you can use for the rotating mass. We like this one better for what we're doing. Within 25 seconds, we got the motor back in. Now we're gonna take that transmission and hit it. We tried. To do it for you guys. The trans going in there while it's in the car is a very tight option. We also had to hammer the other side of the trans tunnel a little bit more. Shh. Things are a little tight. We're working on it. It's our first time. in here. It's definitely a tight fit, especially considering that this transmission comes in here from the factory, but trans tunnel is shaped almost perfectly to it, so that's cool. Now, we can swap out our pan because we got room, and the cross memory that comes with the swap kit is designed to use the N54 trans, and since we are not using the N54 trans, we're using the DCT, 
we are going to end up having to fab something up ourselves. Crick will have fun with that one. We took this whole bracket assembly off of the back because it was a little bit excessive and it stuck out like this far. So that'll just make everything easier. Like we wouldn't need to change out a drive shaft weevil or something like that. I am going to put our spicy boy pan on here just because I'm dying to put it on because it looks pretty. Timothy? And then we got Jim. Going on with y'all. Oh, we we made a transmission fit that shouldn't fit in the car, at least where the oh, engine yeah. mounts are. We use a fine adjustment tool. All right, fast forward to real life, and we got this thing back on. Realizing that our clearancing on this to the floor isn't the best in the world, but you know, almost even with the frame rails. Almost. It's a little lower, which I don't know what I'd rather bottom out on the fuel filter or the. Well, this actually sits above. Yeah, that doesn't though. That does not. But it looks sweet. Right, Jim? What do you think? Looks great. Looks great. Those cooling fins are also pretty generous, so I imagine if it does start to grind, then you know it'll dig through those before bad things happen. Self-clearancing, like my tires. Like an F80 uh, diff cover. Yeah. You know, those little fins are meant to pop off. It's when you know it's time to change the cover. We have made a wonderful discovery. Cheat code. Yeah. So we have two of these DCT transmissions, and we've been going back and forth to it just to check our work to make sure we put the thing back together for one. Um, but we also noticed that it had a different mount on it for the F80 DCT versus the E92 DCT. So we stole that one and mounted it up to this, and it worked perfect with our transcross member. The only difference is we have to do a little notchy. Those guys are a little bit fatter on the corners here. And then this over here, we have the neutral release cable that we have hooked up now that's going up inside the car. So, so we're gonna have to notch that guy too. Using the OEM mounts and everything like that, this thing just sat right where it's supposed to go. You love to see it. Love to see it. So he's gonna make another little notch. We'll throw some paint on the stuff that he cut and grinded. Yeah, and we got a crossword. You're still mad at me, but you know. It's not, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad, and uh, it's only what? El Nacho that and let him beat the shit out it's of it. It's only so. 10 o'clock, so you know, we're less than an hour into our day. We already had the motor pulled, and we're gonna have to have it back in. Yeah. So. Hopefully, we have so much clearance now that we can actually mount the motor mount onto the motor and set it down in. That's the goal to fit in the hole. Every hole is a goal. But I am finally content with our engine position. She's sitting, we measured drive shaft clearance to make sure we won't have any interference issues with the um, gas tank or this little guy. We made these out of shift nuts, but our motor mounts are Delrin and these are also made out of Delrin, so it works out good for, you know, keeping everything consistent. And they're just a little bit taller than the factory ones, probably by like three quarters of an inch. But now, because we pushed up the trans and notched the top of the tunnel more, we only have about five eighths of hang below our frame rail, so less likely that we're gonna just total this pan. Yeah. And there's only about five eighths worth of these cooling fins on here, so if he does shave it down, then we're still gonna be good and in which case the body kit's still sitting lower so if he's hitting this he's probably just destroying everything so but we still want to get as much clearance as possible for like loading on trailers and stuff like that so now that we have the engine in place 100 percent bolted down and the transmission bolted in place i can work on a downpipe can't do the front of it because we still need to build the front of the car but i can go from here back shout out to vibrant for providing us with all of our stainless steel v-bands piping everything to do the exhaust on this car cool thing about vibrant is they actually sell the pie cuts pre-cut and marked for you so these are all from vibrant amazing they're perfectly cut laser cut so you don't have to do any grinding on it any prep work you just slap them together throw a tack weld on there get it to where you want and then finish weld they also got these bad boy pie cuts which are the ovalized and then the round oval eyes that we got from them, our V-bands, and our flex pipe. So we're going to start on the down pipe while Chris is finishing up the fuel lines. What do you guys think of our new signs? They're pretty dope, right? It's really blue, but it's hard to see in this light. They're going to get hung up later. Crickets over here making Skittles, tasting the rainbow. I pulled off a bunch of our old trim and stuff from our donor car out back. Just
just for our wiper cowl and stuff like that. Make this SEM trim and panel paint. Oh, man, that stuff looks fresh. That's better than OEM. Gotta love it. Damn. Right? Yeah. Things up real nice. So now we get a better idea of where we can do component locations. Got all of our fuel lines done. We're just waiting for the fittings for our fuel rails. And then uh, I think Cricket's gonna keep banging away at that exhaust, right? Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, we got something spicy planned for y'all for the back of this car. That's gonna be the real treat. And we'll not... see how much he enjoys it once he actually has to start building it. As of right now, it's not so bad. Well, I got the downpipe. All the pie cuts are basically almost Oh, done. I mean the rear section. Oh, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> We got that sweet downpipe ready to go and just finish well to this guy. Oh, okay. So you know, attach that and maybe do the whole exhaust today. Like that? Get something knocked out fab wise and be very excited. Yeah. It's a little hot right at the end, so. Be like that. Wait a minute. So, SLG provides you with this little billet adapter there for two 8AN hoses as, long, as well as some uh, tight radius 90s which are very important because you can see there's not much room in the trans tunnel. So I have these lines routed up over here and then routed across the side of the frame rail along with the lines over here that are coming from our oil cooler lines that are coming off of our sandwich plate from our oil filter. Everything's tucked up nice and tight on the frame rail. I got that knocked out here. I left the lines just open-ended because we don't really know exactly where our cooler locations are, but it's gonna be a lot harder to make those lines once our front end's on. Look at this nice little unit Kirk just got together. Still needs a little extendo that's gonna go back here and then there's gonna be a band back there. So you just gotta weld a little straight, go back to there. And that'll go back to rounds. We don't need any more ground clearance back here. And hey, we're not gonna tell you what we're doing back there, but we're doing activities. It's going, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Not to give too much away about what's going on here, but he is making a Y pipe. Why from scratch? Why? Because we ran out of parts. <laughs> yeah, that too. And we didn't order a uh, two in the one, so they don't make it in three and a half inch. They only make it in three inch. Yeah. So we're trying to make one that's not going to make obnoxious whistling noises. So we're hoping for that out of this unit. Shooting for it. But no problem. What I did was make all of our rear brake lines work. You remember we had those T's back here? So this one's for our handbrake, and this one over here is for our foot brake, which I then routed the lines up to a mounting tab over there. Plenty of clearance around the axles up there. So those will be nice and clear of the wheels. You don't have to worry about nothing rubbing. So. Once I get the front brake line sorted out, then we can bleed some brakes. But first, we're gonna work on this spicy magic. At this point, we can't really hide it from you anymore. We are going to dump the exhaust out of the license plate hole on the back of this car. We wanna do two-step things with our homies. Yeah, so car show stuff's gonna be lit. All right, so our downpipe and exhaust and is fully boy. done. And our sweet boy, who just uh, took us to the Dominican Republic, you guys Star haven't seen that. that video, go check it out. But we have that bad John going all the way up through and then poke it out. Yeah, it's gonna be sick. Yeah. I'm gonna shoot really, really sweet we're flames. We're gonna melt some spoilers. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna melt the spoiler that goes on. <laughs> so, Mishimoto came out with these sweet dual pass oil coolers. So this little unit is gonna work out perfect for us because we're gonna put this right here. Just because we have two big coolers going in the front of the car, we don't want to block all of our airflow to the radiator, so we're gonna stick this guy Right in there. Taking a break from our regular scheduled programming to do some shop decor. D got us these really cool lights for our partners that we work with. Mishimoto, Vibrant, Kanzai, FDF. Tire streets over here. We have our Drift HQ. We have our ECU masters. We got BC Racing. That's how they look when they're installed. Wise Fab, Prisma, FDF. Don't mind our mess right now, but we're gonna line our whole upper portion of the wall with these sweet LED lights. Remote control. Boom. So we have cleaned out our shop and finally hung up all of our lights with our partnerships that we have. One of them, Tire Streets, you guys know, all of our rentals do the Tire Streets. All of our cars do too. We run accelerators for most of our competitions, so check them out. We also have Kansai. We got the sign made for them as well. Awesome partner. They give us all of our wheels for all of our rental cars. Duarte runs them on both of his cars, all three of his cars. 
Mishimoto, you know, we love all of our oil coolers, our radiators that we get from them, extension tanks, whatnot. Me, I'm a big fan. These boys right here, Vibrant. They're always hooking me up with the best, best stainless steel and aluminum for all of my fabrication needs from exhaust to intercooler piping to intercoolers, everything. Elbows, look, I got all this good stuff right here. HD clamps, boy, you name it, Vibrant, got it. And we got it in stock too, so make sure to check it out. And I love this sign too. ECU Masters, they are in all of our race cars. Bart, they has all of ECU Masters in all of them. This bad John's gonna have it too. Can't wait to show you. Obviously our boy Cody over at BC Racing, always hooking us up with those BC coilovers for street, for race, for drag, for anything you want. They will make them for you to spec. So it's really cool. You can get your spring rate set, everything done from them, and then you just plug and play and set your ride height. Wise Fab, obviously. They make amazing angle kits for our F80. We have it on that. We're having it on our E92 as well. And then right next to them, you know, the rest of our cars have FDF for their Mantis kit. And we have the rear grip kits that they have. What else they got coming out? Hydro mounts, seat mounts, the floor plate, the door plates. They make everything. They're awesome. And then Prisma, another one of our partners that help us out with all of our seats in all of our rental cars. And we have quite a few. So the fact that they partnered with us to do that is really awesome. Shout out to them. So let us know what you guys think of the shop. This is our garage mahal. We're gonna have a couple more lights, you know, set up. Finally got our living room somewhat half-assly set up. And we got motorcycles too for those two-wheel guys that like doing wheelies and stuff. So make some cool like footage, do like real 80s style, 90s style. Simply? Um, yeah, maybe um, by the time this comes out, wish me happy birthday. I'm turning 40. on the e92 we just finished the exhaust the plate in the back chris has been working on the power steering lines and everything getting all of the hoses done fuel lines run but we had a slight delay <laughs> we got a little bit of a problem here it's crazy in here Literally gonna be blood title too. <laughs>